Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is Eddie Marcus again. And I have a few topics I'd like to uh, share with you my viewpoint. I'm reminded some years ago we had a Republican uh, president. And uh, the Republican president was doing what Republican presidents do. And the Democrats were crying. I mean, they were crying out. And the next election came around. For some strange reason, a Republican got back in office. And the Democrats cried and cried and cried. Another election came around, and they got a Democratic president. And the Republicans cried and cried and cried and try. Then they fooled around and had another election and got a Republican president. And the Democrats cried and cried and cried. Then another election came around. And this time they got a Democrat president. And the Republicans cried and cried and cried. Now, the Democratic Party and the Republican Party both share a good number of the American population as far as voters are concerned. I would say, just to be fair, uh, maybe each one would get 35% uh, of the population. Okay? At, le at least those that vote. And so, they're constantly crying. Which says what? Neither are satisfied. Well, we've got another election coming up pretty soon. And the Republicans are looking to see who they're going to put up. And the Democrats are looking to see who they're going to put up. And the people, you, are probably thinking about who you're going to vote for. If you can keep from crying this time. The fact that the other one is going to be crying doesn't mean anything to you. Why doesn't it mean anything to you? Why, if you're a Democrat and the Republicans are crying, why don't you care? Vice versa. If the Democrats are crying Republicans, why don't you care? Do you know why you don't care? Could it possibly be that you have been trained not to care? In other words, is it possible that you can be brainwashed not to care? That's just a thought question. You know, there are so many things that we think about. We talk about the Illuminati. We say that they are the enlightened ones. At least that's the information that's been given. Most of us don't have any idea, real personal in individual confirmation of whether this is even real or not. We've had people who came back and called themselves whistleblowers giving us information. We've had others who've done some investigation and they've given us some further additional information, but for the most part, we just hear what we hear and we believe based upon the, the, the process of our indoctrination. And that's for and against. But what they usually say about the Illuminati is that they are worshipers of the devil. And they mean you or me or any of us any good. Yet, if you hear uh, something said by the Illuminati, they say they are the enlightened ones. They are here to set people free. Free from bondage. Free from a slave master that requires its servants to bow down in servitude and do uh, such uh, monumental things as far as worship is concerned. And as you listen to that, that doesn't sound like good. That doesn't really sound good. But here again, this is what we've been taught. And they seem to want to differ with it. And yet, it is all based upon you, the individual, of what you believe. I think maybe you should know for yourself. Not believe what anybody says. Just find out for yourself. Nevertheless, this is something that we, the people of the United States of America, have to deal with every day. Some of us who are paying attention really have to deal with it. And other people in other parts of the world. We talk about... Uh, concentration camps being set up because the Illuminati got a plan, this this 1% to take 
uh, so many of the population and use them for whatever purpose they might have and the rest of them, you turn them into slaves and the great part that we don't need, just put them in concentration camps and eventually wipe them out like history says they did the Jews. Well, this is information that is across the country. People hear about it, they're reading about it, they're studying about it, they're questioning it. They get together with one another and they talk about it. But what is being done about it, it must be happening in secret because you don't hear too much about it. But you can alter that, you can forego that. You hear talking about the military industrial complex, people who love to fight war, people who are connected with people who make war weapons, people who love to make money and will do anything to keep wars going so that money can constantly be made, so that power can be exhibited amongst those who are hunger, hungry for power. We talk about being able to control the weather, that you can start tsunamis here and earthquakes there and all kinds of things. We were even talking about fixing the sky, uh, using some of the technology that comes from heart. Association also with uh, these trails or something that they be spraying in the sky, saying they're trying to saturate that so they can you turn the sky at their command with their technology in space into a, uh, a, something like a, a TV screen, basically, where they can emphasize as though there are aliens there that's about to attack this nation and scare the hell out of us and make us all come together in fear and looking for a savior. And the monkey that's sitting on the seat who wants all the power will pop up and say, I'm the savior, and will go push the buttons and the Aliens disappear out of the sky. All that other good stuff happens after we've given up all our rights to be anything other than a piece of meat. Well, these are things that we constantly hear about that's happening. We talk about the crime that we see every day, the violence, people robbing, people stealing, people killing, people prostitution, people selling drugs. We talk about people who live in poverty, who are not benefiting from any of this from the Republican Party, the Democratic Party, from all the plans and the wisdom of the Illuminati, and from everybody, they're still living in poverty. You know, and that's something that can possibly be done about this. We talk about devils. We talk about sicknesses. All of these things we talk about. We talk about the 1% who have golden parachutes who have jets that can travel any place in the world to go whenever they choose, to breakfast, another place in the world for lunch, another place in the world for dinner. And just bring some friends with them. The one percent. Well, you know they don't care about anything that's happening down here. Beyond, it's their ability to use it to keep them in that one percent rate. We talk about bankers and the games that bankers play. Oh, they can play some devastating games. You, those of you who had some contact with the bankers, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And all of this, ladies and gentlemen, that I've just mentioned to you is predicated on one and two things. The one thing, the primary thing, is profit. All it seems that all of existence in America and possibly the rest of the world, but I'm not sure about the rest of the world. But I'm sure about my home. Here in America, it's like all living, all existence, everything is predicated on profit. Profit. Everything is about making profit. Caring about human beings, loving spiritually, all that stuff falls way behind profit. Because all things that we said one time was something we didn't want to do, we ended up doing because we wanted to profit. And to make sure that you follow the guidelines that have been set up that allow profiteering to continue, unless you fall into that, they got punishment set on the side for you. Punishment to force you. To force you. Now look, I've heard so much about God 
over the years. I've heard enough about God to make you think that there never was a God. And everybody's saying this and they're coming together. Everything is pulling apart. And it just blows my mind. But one thing that keeps me centered is this. I do see all of these things that exist that I know man really had nothing to do with it coming on the earth, being on the earth. They might do something to keep it growing, you know, treating it, learn the skills and the science to treat it. But they had nothing to do with its originality. I know that. The earth. I know man that <coughs> had nothing to do with the originality of the earth or all of its parts. I know that. I also know that they are miracles. Miracles are things that you can't explain. Humanly, you can't explain. That knowledge has not come yet. But it happened. And so you not knowing how it happened, you associated with the power that made all things. That even if the power didn't directly at that moment enter its own hand in that action, it was set up in such a way originally that when such things take place, that would be the action or reaction. So I'm saying that there's a power beyond me. And for me, I want peace. I want prosperity. I want joy. I don't want to control anybody. I have a hard enough time trying to control myself. But these things I want, I want my dreams to come true. And you know what? I want it so bad that I got no problem with you having your dreams come true. In fact, I would like to ask you to let us help one another to have our dreams. Now, your dreams can come true. And I'm sure your dream didn't come uh, bring in uh, the Illuminati. It doesn't bring in concentration camps. It doesn't bring in foreclosures and indebtedness. It doesn't bring in crime. I'm sure your, your dreams don't harbor those things. So it looked like you would want to be in a dream that left that stuff out. And if it were possible, and you know that what we have been doing up to this point has, wasn't possible to bring it because it hasn't happened. So I'm saying to you today, tonight, if you're listening to me, all we have to do is make a change to achieve what we have just mentioned, what we say we want, your dreams, my dreams, which would allow all of us to come together because we have nothing to split us apart. We don't have religion to split us apart. We don't have government to split us apart. We don't have race to split us apart. We don't have poverty and wealth to split us apart. We have a common design which allows each of us to play a part in the creation of the goods and services that we as a people have determined that we want. And we build it together. And we build a lot of it. And we build it good and well. So that each of us can get from it as we desire. And it will be lasting so we don't have to work ourselves to death, keep that stuff rotating. Now we want to build good. We want to build a door that you can't keep down. We want to build a television that will last. We want to build a car that will give you the greatest mileage. And the, we want to do those things. And the only way we can do it if we change to a system that allows this, a system that will be created by the requirements necessary to do this. Now, I really didn't plan to talk this long but I felt that it was necessary. I propose this to you, ladies and gentlemen. And rather than sitting there thinking about what Democrat you're going to vote for or who you, who you hope they put forward or what Democrat or what Tea Party members going to be shaking their vote, rather than waste your time thinking about that, spend your time thinking about you. Can you change? Can you care for your neighbor as you, for yourself? Can you want for your neighbor as you want for yourself? Can you change your mind? Can you recreate what's in your mind by dumping all the trash and renew it? Can you do that? If you can do that, 
Then we can change this world. All you gotta do is change yourself. Change yourself. And when you change yourself, that stuff comes together, it'll change the world. So we don't have to focus on what we're gonna do but them yet. Let's focus on us. Focus on us as, us as individuals. Get ourselves straight. Know who we are. Know what we are. Know our destiny. And walk captains and masters of it. Now, that way, we can turn around and show the world all of its beauty. Having said that, I think I better stop. And I hope I help somebody some way, somehow. Bye-bye.